Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a cooking video. And basically, it is taking two childhood or kiddo favorites, and instead of purchasing them, making them homemade. So we are going to be making today gummy bears and goldfish crackers. I've made both several times. Um, the gummy bears you can make with pretty much any kind of juice you want. Definitely get something that's good, you know, that's unsweetened, that's organic, that's high quality. Or if you are a home canner, use the juice from your home canned fruits. That's what I did today on this video. I used peach juice from home canned peaches. The other thing are the goldfish. My family loves them. But honestly, it's kind of a pain in the butt to cut all those little goldfish out. So today I did some with the goldfish cookie cutter and I just did some in squares. They look like Cheez-Its. So do whatever floats your boat. Um, they are really, really good. They're tasty. But you do have to remember one thing about homemade treats, especially when you're doing a copycat of a store-bought version that maybe your family is used to. They are never going to taste exactly the same. They're not. Because when you are making it at home, you are making it with good ingredients. You are not putting flavor enhancers. You are not putting in artificial dyes or artificial flavorings. You're not putting in MSG, things like that. So they are going to taste different. They're not gonna taste exactly the same. So you might get a little pushback in the beginning if you are starting to go that route of homemade versus store-bought. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it and eventually that's what they're gonna be used to and they will start liking it better. They really, I promise you they will. So let's get making some homemade gummy bears and some goldfish crackers. The ingredients needed for our gummy bears or fruit snacks are some silicone molds, any shape, any size, one cup of good quality juice. I'm using my home canned peach juice, but you can use any good quality, preferably unsweetened juice. Then you're gonna need some gelatin. I use pastured beef gelatin that I get from Azure Standard. You can surely get gelatin in the grocery store. And then two teaspoons of lemon juice. This will make one batch. For every one cup of juice, you're going to need three tablespoons of the beef gelatin. To start, we are going to heat up our juice and our gelatin mixture. You do not want it to boil. You don't want to heat it too hot because you don't want to break down any nutrients. During cold and flu season, it is awesome to do orange juice because of the vitamin C, and you definitely don't want to heat that too much. You just want to heat it until it's warm so the gelatin dissolves. So three tablespoons of the gelatin to one, table, one cup of juice, and then two teaspoons of lemon juice, and then I am just going to stir it, stir it, stir it, and keep whisking it the entire time it is going to get thick. Once it gets thick and it is warmed, then we are just gonna start filling our molds. All you need to do is use your little dropper that comes with most molds and fill up your squares. I have them on a cookie sheet so I can easily transfer them to the refrigerator. Once you get your molds filled, you're going to put them in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes and they will set up. It's been about 20, 30 minutes and now I'm just gonna pop them right out of the molds. If they don't come out of the molds easily, then you didn't use enough gelatin. But as long as you stick to the three tablespoons per one cup of juice, you'll be fine. And there you have it your homemade fruit snacks, gummy bears, whatever you like to call them. They are delicious, they are good for you, and the beef gelatin has 12 grams of 
protein per tablespoon. Okay, to get started on our homemade goldfish crackers, we're gonna use our food processor. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to put in three cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Now I have the dough blade on my food processor because essentially we are making a dough. This is the first time I've used it in this food processor. So hopefully it works just as well as my other one. And then we're gonna add in one cup of flour And then to that, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of paprika, a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. We're gonna put our lid on and we are going to pulse it until the cheese mixes in with the flour and the seasonings and all that. So here we go. Okay, I think that looks good. Now we're going to add six tablespoons of cold salted butter cut into half inch pieces. So I haven't cut my butter yet, so I'm gonna go get that cut up and we'll get it in there. Okay, I've got all of our butter and we are going to pulse that until the mixture looks like little peas. Take a look after 10 pulses. I believe that's exactly what we want. That is perfect. So now we're going to add cold water, one to two tablespoons, a tablespoon at a time until the dough comes together into a ball. So we are gonna just put this on low and let it run. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Sorry, friends. I'll get to this, I really will. Okay, I'm gonna open up our little trap door here so I can have it running while I'm adding the water. Okay, there is our dough. It is a little bit sticky. I probably should have used a little less water, but I was a little impatient. So let's get this out and start making our crackers. Okay, our dough is absolutely beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is divide it in half, easier to work with. And then on a lightly floured surface, we're gonna roll it out to about a quarter inch thickness. I'll just get a little bit of flour on my rolling pin. And we're going to show you two different ways to do this, to make these crackers. Once we get it cut out, or rolled out. <laughs> Then we're gonna cut out. I tend to go a little bit thinner than the quarter inch. Not quite as, oh, it's a little sticky here. Not quite as thin as an eighth of an inch, but a little thinner than a quarter. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to do that. Now, two ways to cut these out. I purchased a goldfish cookie cutter off of an independent seller on Amazon. I think you can get them on Etsy too. People make these with their 3D printers. Just make sure they're using food grade material if you're gonna you know, order like a cookie cutter or something. And then we can just cut these out. Now mine does five at a time. They had one that did like a whole sheet of them at one time, like 32 or something, and it was expensive. I did not buy that one. You don't even need this, because the next thing we're gonna roll out are not gonna be goldfish. They're just gonna be crackers, kind of like, they look like Cheez-Its. Because you do not have to buy any special equipment for this. Is this tedious? Yes, it is. But I don't know, I find it kind of relaxing. And just knowing that I'm feeding the my family and the babies something, a fun treat, but a fun treat that's actually half decent for them, you know? It doesn't have artificial flavor, artificial color. It doesn't have stabilizers. It doesn't have all that stuff. So that's where I get my satisfaction. So we are just going to lift these up and put them on a parchment lined baking sheet. This is the part that takes a little while. But that's okay. The next thing I'm gonna show you how to do without the cookie cutter goes much quicker. So I'm gonna get these on our cookie sheet and we're gonna move on. Okay, there are my goldfish crackers. I still have a ton more dough, but we're gonna do those in a different way. So it calls for flaky sea salt. I don't have any flaky sea salt. I'm just gonna use my Redmond's and just sprinkle the Redmond's over top. I should probably do them like individually so they, I make sure they all get it, but good enough, folks, good enough. Okay, and now we are going to bake these at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. And then we're gonna make the second tray using a different method, not the cookie cutter. Okay, I took another piece of dough, rolled it out, and now I'm just gonna kinda cut off the rough sides if I was making this just for me and not for camera, I probably wouldn't do this. I would just leave the rough sides because honestly, we don't care, but we're gonna be fancy like. And now we're going to do it just like we do our sourdough crackers. We are gonna cut them into pieces, into squares. Let's see. Ah. You know what? We're gonna make this kind of even. And we're gonna cut them into one inch squares, kind of like Cheez-Its. They're all cheese crackers, right? And then cut them this way. And then I'm gonna poke a little hole in them just like I do for the sourdough crackers. I forgot to put the timer on. We're just gonna poke a little hole. We're gonna sprinkle them with salt.
transfer them to a baking sheet. And we're going to bake them the same exact way as we did the goldfish. That was much easier and much quicker. This may be my new preferred method. We'll just call them square goldfish. Okay, here are our goldfish and our square goldfish. <laughs> They're absolutely delicious and my family loves them and I just know, like knowing what they're eating and just a few simple ingredients. So there you have it. Two favorites, gummy bears and goldfish. So friends, that is it. You saw it was not hard to do at all. You really don't need much special equipment. You do need some sort of silicone mold for the gummy bears. You can pick them up pretty cheaply on Amazon and I've seen a lot at um, thrift stores. You can use any shape you want. I wish mine were a little bit bigger. Mine are kind of tiny. So I am on the hunt for some other ones. Um, and you definitely don't need the cookie cutter for the goldfish. Just cut them into squares. They taste just as good. <laughs> and they're a lot less work. Trust me on that one. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know in the comments below what kind of store-bought treat that you make at home. Because I'm always looking for ideas. So Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.